there are so many bad guacamoles in the world. There are. So let's just build guacamole from the base up because I think that that's what you really have to start with. It of course has to start with avocados and I know everybody laughs when you say that, but but there's a lot to know about avocados. Number one, the avocado's got to be ripe. And we're so used to going into grocery stores where they may have rock hard avocados. Now, if you go into a Mexican grocery store, you won't find rock hard avocados. You'll find ones that are ripe and ready to use because people are buying them to take home and make guacamole or some other thing with. But you have to wait until you can press on the bulbous end and it's going to give. And that's when you know that it's ripe enough to make the guacamole smooth, rich, and all the stuff that we're looking for in a guacamole. Okay, there's a little piece that sits up in the top here. I call it the button end, and you pull that out. And you want that to be in it when you buy it because that protects the top from being oxidized. And then you cut around the, the pit. You, you take that button end out because you don't want it to end up in the guacamole right away. Um, and then cut around the pit, twist the two sides apart like that. Then get the pit out. You can do that many different ways. Scooping with a spoon for those that don't like to take a sharp knife and go straight toward your palm always works too. But if you're comfortable with that kind of thing, then just use the uh, knife blade to lodge into the pit and then scrape the avocado from the skin. Now, there's no natural sodium really in the avocado, so you have to salt them nicely. And then there's no natural acid in them either. So you want to season them with a little bit of lime juice. And I'm going to emphasize the little bit there because most people say, oh, I want my guacamole to stay beautiful in my party for hours. And so they just load it up with lime juice, having heard that that will slow down or retard the oxidation process. Well, yeah, it will. And it'll take away every bit of avocado flavor in that you've got there. But what's the good news? <laughs> the good news is only that, you, that if you want your guacamole to stay good during a party, put it over ice. I like to use a Mexican lime juicer, and the reason is it turns the lime inside out, takes out more of the juice, and it crushes the skin at the same time. And you know, everybody knows that in the skin is all the essential oils where all the flavor is. So you're gonna actually release some of those into the juice as well. So your lime juice made with a Mexican lime juicer is gonna taste more like lime than any other way of juicing it. Now, let's talk about mashing the avocado. Um, there are, you can do it with a, a fork or a spoon or whatever, but I think the most efficient way to get a really nice texture. And when I say nice texture, it means chunky because I like guacamole that has a, a chunky texture. Will just be a few passes with an old fashioned potato masher. And though I occasionally use this for potatoes at my house, it is typically should be renamed as the avocado masher, not the potato masher. OK, so we've got a base guacamole made here. And you may think that's kind of crazy, but Honestly, many places in Mexico, this would be called guacamole. So what I'm going to do is to make something that is really far afield. One of the things that we look in our restaurant for is any kind of seasonal ingredient that we could put into our guacamoles, because we always have a seasonal guacamole, and we want it to reflect where we're cooking. This is one of my favorite things. I love fennel. And uh, when you taste a really good avocado, you'll notice a slight anise little flavor to it if it's a really good one. And that goes very well with the flavor of fennel. So you can chop up fennel raw and put it in in place of the white onion. But to tell you the truth, I like the flavor of it better if we roast it. So I have that sweetens roasted it. it, sweetens it up, and it also makes it a little less fibrous tasting. So you chop up the roasted fennel. This, I put a little water around it, drizzle it with some olive oil, sprinkle it with salt, 350 degrees, it takes about an hour. You start it off covered, uncover it, and then finish the roasting process. And so we have some chopped up here, and I'm gonna add that, and think of this as that onion element in a classic guacamole. Now the tomato for this, I'm gonna replace with another element that's going to give us what I think is sort of like that fruitiness that you get out of a really good tomato, because tomatoes botanically are a fruit, just like the avocado. So 
in Chicago in the fall, in New York in the fall, you think about fennel, and in the farmer's markets, you think about buying apples because there's just such beautiful variety of all of these locally grown apples. So that's what we're putting in here as well, is the apple. You can put cilantro in here, it's just super delicious, but you could also put some fresh thyme, and which I think goes really, really nicely with the flavor of the fennel. Spent half the time I like to make this same mixture, but with cilantro in it. So you can kind of go whatever direction you want. It, once you know the basics of it, you can kind of tailor make the recipe to suit you. So a little rough chop on this thyme. Give it a, give it a little flavoring there. And then I'm going to stir all of that together. And that's going to be our roasted fennel and apple guacamole sort of reflecting the season that we're in right now. It is perfectly salted. Mm. Oh, that's awesome. Mm. Good stuff, huh? Great. 